Hello, Mr. Allman here, and this is your Allman cast on the quadrat method sampling technique. Sampling techniques are necessary in order to be able to estimate the population size of a given species. This is a necessary tool for ecologists. In real biological communities, the scale is vast. The numbers of living things can be enormous into the thousands, tens of thousands, millions. And the geography across which biological communities can extend can make it such that it's really challenging to actually be able to count everything that might be there. But as an ecologist, knowing population sizes is really important information. We might need to know how many of a particular species uh, are living in a particular place in a given year. Populations go up and down, and a fluctuation in any one species can have a big impact on the rest of the ecosystem. So if we want to understand what's going on, and if we want to be able to prepare uh, for any changes that might come in the future, it's important us to be able to rely upon good population estimates in order to be able to understand exactly these are structured. So a population estimate is necessary whenever a complete count of organisms in a population is not practical, again, because of geography uh, or because of the sheer number or in some cases might even be impossible. Um, and this is gonna be true a lot in aquatic ecosystems where being able to go to all places in a particular underwater ecosystem just is not gonna be allowable. Estimations by nature have uncertainty. And so it's important to have standardized sampling techniques across all scientists. That way, uh, if there's a common understanding of how to come across an estimate, uh, there's going to be less confusion um, and less disagreement between different scientists uh, about what those population estimates actually are. The quadrat sampling method is the tool that we're going to learn about in this class that's used by ecologists to be able to estimate population size. This method reduces sampling bias for reasons I'll show in a moment uh, by increasing more randomness and less decision making uh, on the, the part of the, the actual sampler uh, in choosing which organisms to count. The method here promotes precision and accuracy, um, again, helping to increase the quality of that population estimate that you're going to calculate. Quadrats can vary in terms of shape. Uh, they should be rectangular solids, but my recommendation is that you divide your sample area into a square grid. Quadrats can also vary in size. The size of particular quadrats uh, is actually a bit of a trade-off. If you have smaller quadrats, it could be that there's a lot more variance. Some quadrats with no individuals and other quadrats with more. Having large quadrats gives you a lower variance. You're going to see a more similar population count between the different areas that you sample. Now, based on the size of our field and the types of things that you're going to be counting, I recommend using a standard one by one meter squared quadrat, which is easy to assemble using meter sticks. The quadrat uh, is the actual square. The grid is, is going to be made up of many quadrats. You're going to be counting species of interest in those particular quadrats. It's good to have a universal counting rule. Uh, there are several different ways that this can be done. Um, one way which I would recommend is that you set up a physical grid and those barriers are going to be on the exterior of the quadrat. Anything that is inside is clearly going to be counted. You would say that's in and you're going to use that as part of your count. Anything that's on the top or right hand edge of your quadrat, you count those, count them as in. But anything on the left or the bottom side, you would count those as out. Having that consistency across your group uh, is going to help ensure that you don't overcount or undercount uh, by, uh, by keeping it standard with what to do with those organisms that appear on the edge of your actual quadrat. So here's an outline of how the sampling method works. Number one, choose your sample area. Uh, for example, I've got this, uh, this section that is highlighted in blue. You're then going to divide that area into a grid of equal size quadrats. So every one of these boxes is an equal side, size. And again, I recommend for your purposes that you choose boxes that are one square meter. 
Once that area is divided into a grid, you can number those. In this case, we see there are 29 equal size quadrats numbered from 1 through 29. Now you can go to a random number generator to select quadrats for sampling. A random number generator, you can use um, a more robust program like random.org, um, or even something as simple as uh, using your phone's assistant uh, to be able to select for you a number. Um, it's just important that uh, whatever method you use to select those numbers, that there's an equal chance of any number being selected. The actual number that you're, going, that you're going to select is a little bit dependent on the number of quadrats, um, at least 10%, and that 10% is really going to be the minimum for, uh, for larger area, or larger sample sizes. In this case, if I had 30 quadrats, I would probably recommend that students test something more like 8 to 10 of them, so looking more at about 30% on the high end. If you had 100 quadrats, then selecting 10% would be sufficient. Uh, in general, the more quadrats you select, though, the, the better your data is going to be. Once, the, once you have gotten your list of quadrats, then you would go to those places uh, within your sample area, lay down um, those borders using usually a physical barrier. Um, I, again, I recommend meter sticks are, are nice to be able to use in this case and count the population or populations that you are looking at in each of those selected grids. You would then calculate the average population per grid um, by averaging the population count in all of your sampled areas. Once you know how many organisms you have per grid, then you can calculate the total estimated population. So if I looked in box 1, 10, 22, 12, 25, etc., and I found that there was an average of 10 oysters in each of those grids. Once I know that there's 10 oysters per grid, I can then multiply that by the total number of grids. 29 quadrats times 10 per quadrat gives me an estimated population of 290 individuals. You're gonna be applying the quadrat method to the population study. Your task in the study is to perform a test for association between two species in the school field's biological community. You have to use the quadrat method in order to do your population sampling. A test for association is going to look for, the, look for a relationship, whether or not you can establish a relationship between two species. When you lay out your quadrat, you would look for the presence of those two species and you would simply tally how often do they appear together? So both of them being present, one of them being present and one absent, or vice versa, or when it is that they're both absent. Uh, from there, you can use a statistical test called chi-square, which will be detailed in another video, in order to be able to determine uh, whether or not these organisms are associated. There are two different types of associations. A positive association is when two species are more commonly found together. This could be true of predator-prey relationships because where you find prey, you'll also find their predator, uh, as well as it can be used for, uh, for species that are symbiotic. If they help each other in some way, the presence of one is gonna assist uh, and encourage the growth of another. A negative association, on the other hand, is going to be when you can determine that two species are found more commonly apart, meaning that when you find one, you don't find the other. Uh, and so it's more likely that one is maybe chasing away the other, showing that in some way these two species might harm or crowd out or compete in some way with each other for space. It's also possible that and two species have no association, meaning that it's fairly random they're dispersed independently of each other, and so they don't, they neither really support nor hurt the presence of each other, and so their presence together is fairly random. That's it for sampling methods uh, using the quadrat method. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.